I am going to do something very scary. <laughs> very scary right now. I am going to, I've, I've been thinking about this today for the tutorial. Here's the how-to. And it, I am going to show you a, a bit of a how-to, but what I really want, the, the point I really want to make today is how to let your creativity flow. Okay, so I am going to take you deep inside into Chris's brain today. <laughs> Scary, right? <laughs> I, I want to take you kind of step by step my process of what I do when I uh, start creating something or when I become inspired. So if you want to hang out with me for a few minutes and step inside my little brain here, I'm going to take you through with pictures what's going on inside here <laughs> when it comes to coming up with a project. So one of the things that I often get asked, I've done like Studio 5, which is um, our local uh, Channel 5 station here in Salt Lake City. I've done it once a month for 10 years, which is crazy, right? And so I'm always trying to um, think of uh, projects that I can share on that show. And they always have to, they all, they usually have to be, <laughs> they usually have to be projects that anyone can do that, um, you know, because when you're, you're, you're teaching an audience, um, like a, an audience on television, you, you can better believe that not everybody are quilters, right? But a lot of us love to sew and we love to be creative. And so you have to find ways to, uh, come up with things that um, just really is, is so doable for whether you are a, a very experienced sewer or whether you're a brand newbie, right? And so every month I'm like, okay, what should I, what should I teach now? And I have found myself doing the same thing with three things at three. Now it's every day, and I'm thinking, well, what what could I share with them that is something new to learn or whatever. And so um, today I'm going to kind of take you down that journey. And <laughs> Sue asked, is Mrs. Frizzle driving the bus there? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mrs. Frizzle's going on in the brain and, um, and kind of just take you through the, through what I'm going to show you today and how I got from point A to point B. And what my hope is, is that by sharing this process with you, that it might inspire you to think about things differently and as you try and come up with creative you know projects and things to do whether it's you're planning a party or whether you are trying to come up with a new design for something I hope that what I share with you today will be helpful um, as you see how my mind works when I'm when I'm starting down this road. Okay, so the first thing I'm always thinking about is, uh, first of all, I, I think about what season it is. What What is the season we're in? Because so many times there are things that we do that are seasonal, right? And so the first thing that came to my mind for what I wanted to share today it is uh, right here. <laughs> My uh, little 4th of July glasses here, right? And you better believe I'm going to rock, be rocking these with my kids this weekend, right? Fourth of July is coming up and I want to just like, just have a fun old time. So I picked these up for my kids and we are going to play that night and we'll watch the fireworks and um, even from our own home because, you know, all the fireworks shows have been canceled as far as like big groups. And so we're going to do this. We're going to have fun. All right. So this is the first thought that comes to my head is what season are we in? And I wanted to show you this to say, yep, 4th of July is just right around the corner, right? So we're only a few days away from 4th of July. So I have to think of, okay, what is something fast, simple that I could do to add to this, um, you know, the party atmosphere or whatever. Um, I'll probably have, you know, Kim's family over and we'll have a barbecue, probably have my mom over and we'll just do something pretty low key, but I still want to make it something special. So um, 
anyway, so that's where I'm at. Um, so I've got to do something, something fast because it's only a few days away and I want to do something patriotic. So with that being said, I'm thinking about some of the other experiences that I've had recently that have made me feel like, ooh, I'm excited to, you know, be celebrating the 4th. And I shared this picture the other day, but um, I want to bring it up again because this is my niece, uh, Emily. This is Kim's daughter who's getting married. And... Um, this was at her bridal shower this past weekend and I was showing you guys earlier about look at what she's holding she's holding that little pie carrier that was made from day at the fair so now my mind is on pies right I'm on pies and I'm thinking about there's nothing more patriotic than a uh, than an apple pie, a cherry pie, a blueberry pie, because now I'm starting to go with colors. So red, white, and blue, 4th of July, I'm thinking pies, so I'm thinking cherry, and then um, probably the apple's not gonna quite fit into my color scheme, but I could do the, the blueberry, and now I've got red, white, and blue going on. All right, so that is where my thoughts are taking me. And then, um, let me see, got a few photos here I wanna share. Okay, so I'm thinking, all right, so what fabric would I want to use to represent a red, white, and blue pie? So I immediately go to something that might be sound a little strange, but it's the brand new line from, Be from uh, Benertex. This is Nancy Halverson's brand new line called Better Not Pout. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourself, how in the world are you going from 4th of July and now we're talking about Christmas? Are you kidding me, Chris? And the answer is yes, because I'll show you. I remember we did last week, we did a comment, no, two weeks, two weeks ago was the comment sold sale where I was selling the Better Not Pout line, Christmas line, right? And I remember saying to myself, one of the reasons why I love this line so much is because it doesn't scream Christmas. The whole line doesn't scream Christmas. There's definitely a few Christmas prints in it. You've got some holly berries and you've got the Christmas stockings, but, however, there is this fabric right here that I absolutely fell in love with. And I thought, oh my goodness, I need a whole bunch of those. I, 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 need, I need all that fabric because, a whole bunch of those bolts, because this doesn't screen Christmas. It might be from Better Not Pelt, which is a Christmas line. So that's another thing that I want to hopefully pass on to you is don't get stuck in lines. Just because it's a Christmas line doesn't mean that those fabrics aren't gonna go elsewhere. Don't pay attention to what it says on the selvage, right? You know, that's one of the reasons why I love Kimberbell fabrics so much is because there are so many parts of Kimberbell that are, aren't specific to um, a certain holiday. There's a few prints scattered here and there, but then there's so many prints that can be used all year long. This is one of those prints from Nancy Halverson that I absolutely loved. And to me, if you take a look at that print, it first of all, it's a beautiful shade of red. And um, hey, Barb, Barb, would you mind grabbing, me, or Debbie, would you mind grabbing me that red bolt, please? And I also need um, the other checkered bolts as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this to me feels Christmassy. Look how pretty that is. And it also feels very patriotic because of the reds. All right, so this color, actually, the coloring is so bad right now and through this screen, this looks more orangey. It's not orangey. It is definitely the color that you're seeing on the screen. Okay, I hope I'm not boring you. I, I just wanna be able to kind of take you through this process of creating something. Okay, and then I'll show you what the finished product was. So, um, so this is Better Not Pout. Again, I'm thinking 4th of July, not Christmas. Okay, so I've got my apple pie, or not my apple pie, my cherry pie, right? 
And I think to myself, okay, what, if I were making this, what would the crust be? And my immediate thought goes to this fabric. I'm gonna show this. Okay, this looks like a crust, a pretty good crust, right? This is um, called Shabby by Lori Holt of, uh, at Riley Blake. And so you can see some, you know, some different texture in there with how the prints are very modeled. And to me, that definitely looks like a pie crust. But I wasn't quite certain that that was what I wanted with this. It was cute and it worked, but in my mind, when I think of pies, I'm also thinking about a country fair, okay? I'm thinking of a country fair. So this image comes to my mind, gingham. Gingham all day long. When it comes to country fairs, it's gingham, right? That just reminds you of something country. Mason jars remind you of something country. This whole feeling brings you back to, um, to a very country fair like image in your mind. So in your mind, you're thinking, you know what? This is cute. This could absolutely work. But what do you guys think about this for a pie crust? Think a little outside the box a little bit. How about something like this? Okay, it's gingham. It's uh, kind of a brownish mustard color. And so this is definitely more fair-like than this. Do you see where my mind is? It's going. All right. So the gingham, yeah. <laughs> Brenda says, I need all the gingham. I love gingham. See, here's the print. And so this print to me felt like, well, it doesn't scream pie crust but it gives the look of pie crust, gives the look of pie crust, but it gives more of the feeling of a country fair, which is very pie-like. Are you following my this thought process? Okay, so I definitely knew I needed this fabric in there. Now, my next step was, um, oh, here's another picture I found. Um, I will, you know, find pictures for inspiration. This is another very vintagey paper doll like. This takes us back to a very innocent time, right? Paper dolls, very innocent. Look at all the gingham there the pink gingham, the green, the blue, and the red gingham. All right. So, yeah, and it, yeah, you're right, Brenda. It has a lattice feel to it. Okay. So that's where I went with the pie crest. Well, then my mind is thinking, okay, I love pie. I love pie. Chris loves M&Ms. <laughs> huh, we just made uh, these little candy pouches the other day for three at three, didn't we? Hmm, M&Ms. wonder if there's an M&M pie. Well, yeah, of course there is. Anything you can find on the internet. Look what I found, M&M pie. <laughs> so I knew that um, my mind may, may have been thinking squirrel or, or M&M's, right? And then I just go to M&M pie and look what I find and look how cute the lattice is. And then you've got the scrunchy crust around the center or around the outside, okay? That's just frosting. But that doesn't have to stop me from going down that road of creativity. That's adorable, is it not? So cute. It's a cupcake. So cute. And so now I'm thinking about the lattice and how I want the lattice. And notice the lattice is straight. It's not bumpy. The bumpiness is my crest going around the outside. But then the lattice is straight. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited to show you my finished project. Okay, so I've got that on the brain, and then, let's see, I also have, let's take a look at this. This I found um, on Studio 5, uh, this picture. Look how cute that little pennant is. How fun is that? That, my friends, is made with paper. 
Well, I love paper and I used to do a ton of scrapbooking and stuff, but my world right now is fabric. So can I think about, ah, Dee, you're, you're with me. Um, some of you are starting to catch on to now where I'm going with this. So this is a paper picture and I'm thinking, well, that's adorable. A pennant that is in the shape of a pie and look at that pie crust. And I can't quite do that with fabric, but what could I do? Mm, some of you are following. Da, da, da. So then I'm also thinking, <laughs> this was, okay, is this the cutest thing ever? Um, we just finished this. This is part of our bowl fillers. Oh, I can't seem to get that off the screen there. Um, our, for those of you who are in our bowl fillers program, this is your bowl fillers for this next month. Is that adorable? I just had to take the photographs today. And I'm going, yeah, a pennant is where it's at because there's nothing that screams, uh, you know, um, summer more like a celebration and a celebration with pennants and so um, our our team here at the shop created these three uh, little bowl fillers so those of you who are in the pillow bowl filler program that's going to be going out this week and those are so cute aren't they but again the the feel of the summer banner I said okay summer banners aren't over we're going for a summer banner okay so i'm almost done with this i promise <laughs> then i got thinking oh you know we just did that patriotic pineapple so fun and i remembered that alicia you're out there somewhere alicia remember she she posted this on friends of my girlfriends and she was so excited because she took the tutorial i did from that one week where or from the the one three at three where i talked about the ruffling and she put her ruffles down the pineapple strip the white strip isn't that adorable so good job alicia on that and good job alicia for being inspired to say well I could do this and I could take this new technique and be able to add it to this and so Alicia took the the um, ruffles and was able to add it on to the pineapple that we did I love 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 when I see you all taking ideas and becoming inspired to now try something new to try something else to combine ideas and that's exactly the same process that I do when I come up with different ideas as I go well I know how to do this and we could try this and what would give the look of this right so um, I decided, sure enough, if you guessed that I was going to do a ruffle for my pie crust, you are correct. So let me, oh, and let me pull this up. I think my ruffles are over there. Hold on. But this was, for those of you who may not have been with us, you can go back and watch this. I showed this little tutorial the other day on making an easy peasy. Hey, Bart, are those um, pennants done? Okay an easy peasy table runner. Remember we talked about this the other day? That is so cute. So yeah, that with a tea towel and then just adding the ruffles. Well, so I thought, you know what? I could do that. I could do that for the, the pennants. So introducing to you, I'm not completely done with them yet, but are you ready? There we go. There, it are my pie, my USA pie pennants, just like that. And that's where I went. So I could, you know, hang these and I would have my baker's twine. Oh, let me, hold on just a second. Let, oh, you got that? Okay, all the stuff over there, I just need all that. I was gonna actually film over there, so all my stuff was over there earlier. And then we realized that I was missing something ended up coming over here anyway long story short baker's twine love 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 baker's twine that's what i'm going to string these on and then one more thing is that 
what is a what good is a county fair without a blue ribbon right so I need to add some more blue and I had a, a blue check over there Barb do you see the blue check no, fabric just a, piece. Uh, just a piece it's fine okay so a blue runner uh, or a, a blue ribbon this is going to represent my blue ribbon. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the ruffles and guess what? I just hot glued them on. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's all I did. I'm going to take show you how I did this, but then I'm going to string them along my little pie banners and my blue check is going to represent. Um, I'm just going to tear off a piece, tie it in a knot, which is very, you know, free flowing, more country fair like, and have the blue ribbon going there. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm also going to add some blue, um, like a, a navy blue mini rickrack, and I will tie those up between along with this. So the blue, what we're doing is we're adding texture, we're adding layers. Okay, so. It's kind of like when I was young, I had a teacher who she would she would have us um, start drawing, okay? And we would think that we were done. We were done. We'd say, oh, I'm done. I'm done with this. And she'd look at it and she'd say, not quite done yet. Not quite done. You're, you're getting really close, but I want you to keep tapping into that. Tap, tap into that little creative head of yours because I know you can do more. She was very encouraging, right? And so that's what I tried to be when I was a teacher. I tried to be very encouraging to my students and say, you're not quite done yet. You are so close, you're getting there, but I know you've got it in you to add a little bit more. So I'd send my students back to their tables and they would keep going. I would do that with my students when it came to writing and I would I would start reading and I'd say mm, what else could you add to uh, make it more visual for the reader what else could you add to um, make this this sentence a little more exciting you know how wh where do we need to go with this and and we would discuss different ideas of what we could do and then that student would go back and they would continue to write more that's kind of how I am when it comes to projects. I like to, I like to do projects, but I like to say, what else could I do that's just a little bit more to add to that? And we do, can do the same thing. So that's why I could just have the red twine and it would look super cute and it would be fine, but then the blue ribbon comes to mind. And so I'm gonna go with the gingham again and then I'm gonna just take it one step further because maybe I have a bunch of this in my craft room okay I bet you have lots of ribbons and trims and things that you could just pull out and there's no right or wrong right there's no right or wrong it's it's yours it's yours only and you get to do whatever you want with this whole process so we could add that. I'm seeing some of you are saying like you could do clothespins and I love that. I love that idea. You could absolutely do clothespins. So with these ones, I actually cut them out um, and look on the back is the pie crust again, but I cut these out of what we call Peltex, which is a two-sided fusible. All right, two-sided fusible. Now, I love the scallop look. I thought that was really fun, right? And I had an Accu uh, an accu cut that cut these out for me but let's say you don't have something fancy like that just cut triangles no big deal just cut triangles so I said you know what I'm gonna do another one I'm gonna do another color version so I am doing like the red white and blue okay I'm gonna be having this out this weekend super easy peasy but if I wanted something that's maybe going to extend into like September, when really county fairs are going on, then I went with something a little more vintagey, a little more vintage look. I went a little bit smaller pie and I went straight edges. So this is my vintage pies that will be hanging on a banner. Do you see how there's no right or wrong way to do this? So I still went with the idea of doing the ruffled uh, top 
and I did my straight lattice based off of straight lattice cupcakes that I saw on Pinterest. Okay, and I remembered, yeah, I, I like that look. I like that look. I like the straight, and I like the, the, the scallopy along here. Okay, um, yeah, Barb says you could use pinking shears or scallop shears. Absolutely. You could, they have rotary blades that are scallops. You could certainly do that too. Um, and then it's front and back is the pie crust and then underneath it. So again, think about how your mind works and how you can um, start playing with ideas. You know, something that started out again with the idea of my niece opening up a, a, a bridal shower gift where it was a pie carrier. It got my mind on pies. And then I see this cute pennant that's made out of paper. And it's basically made out of brown bags, which is super cute. But I love fabric, so I'm gonna go with the fabric, you know. And so th then we're talking about ruffles and, uh, you know, the ruffles that we did from the other day. So all of this that we do, and, and someone mentioned, I think yesterday on 3 at 3, they said, um, I wish I had more time to do all of these projects. And I, and I, what I want, the message I want to get across is that you don't have to do all these projects. Just do these little things to keep in the back of your mind for that day that you go, oh, I want to make a pie crust. And how is the best way to do that? Well, I'm going to do a ruffle because I remember when Chris showed us how to do a ruffle with the longest length and highest tension. You remember that? Longest length, highest tension. Those are your two things. And you can do a ruffle. And that was so simple and so quick and easy to do that it just, you know, it went together so easily. Now, as a quick little demo, let me go ahead and show you what I did to make a pie, a piece of pie. <laughs> some of you are saying, now I want some pie. <laughs> That's right. Happy fourth, right? This is called Peltex. It's double-sided fusible. Okay, you can pick it up at any craft store, your quilt shop. It has a bu bumpy side on both sides, which makes it fusible. All right, and it's nice and stiff. And then I pre-cut my blueberry pie. Look how cute that is with the little lemons. Um, again, this is going to go for a little bit more of a vintage feel on this one. And then, let me bring you over to my ironing station. And I have the Peltex. Now remember, it's got a, a fusible on both sides. So what I want to do is line this up. Okay, it's like just putting together a puzzle. And I'm not going to hold it on for very long. I'm going to give it just a light press just to hold it in place. Because if I hold it on for very long, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> my fusible that's underneath is going to stick to my mat. We don't want that. So I just gave it a quick press just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to take my um, crust, flip it over, and put it on this side and again a qu just a quick press to hold it in place there we go now it's that it's held in place on both sides now I can go back and just hold it on for a few more seconds longer so that it all fuses together have you used Peltex before it's it's not a product that we use um, real often in quilting but I do love it when it comes to crafting. And this is, when you make pennants, that's what I would definitely consider, you know, kind of merging both worlds of crafting and fabric. I love it. Okay. So that's all there is to it. My pie is done. I mean, how easy was that? I'm not even going to sew it. Can you believe that? If you wanted to, you certainly could go around the edges and sew it, but I'm not going to. Nope, nope, nope. I am not going to do that, friends. Then what you'll do is you take a one inch strip of your lattice, or again, whatever size you want it to be. And what I did here was I already cut 
um, my heat and bond to match the back of it. So I fused on the heat and bond and I just realized that, oh, let me grab some scissors real quick. There we go. And with this, I'm going to just kind of play with it. And I'm going to go, oh, yep, that looks good. And I'll do one here. Yep, that looks good. And now I have two pieces of my pie crust lattice. The fusible is already on. Okay, and I just have them going at a diagonal. Notice that there is an overlap there. I do want that because I want it to extend beyond the outside and then I'll go back and just cut it off. Okay, so I have two parts of my pie crust done. I'm going to do two more. Okay, there we go. But you don't have them right? Alrighty, so now I'm going to just fuse those in place. Easy peasy. It is. Have you watched any of our okay, that's all there is to it. I'll let that cool down for a minute. And then I, the last thing I would do is take this to my sewing machine and do the messy ruffle that we talked about the other day. Now, if I flip this around, you can see where this extends beyond it. All you have to do is just take your scissors and trim right up to that pie. All right, again, so simple. And I'm just gonna just press it one more time, just for good measure. All right, and there we go. Whoops, let's get this up a little closer there. There's my pie. So maybe, shall I show you real quick how to do this messy ruffle for those of you who might be new. Let me pull my machine over here. I am, all I'm going to do is I'm setting my stitch length to be the highest length and the highest tension, or I should say longest length, highest tension. You can do that on any machine. It does. You don't have to have a special uh, machine to do this. Highest tension, longest length. Now take a look at what happens when I put this and I'm going to have that stitch right go right down the center. Uh, for those of you who didn't watch me do this the other day, you are going to be amazed. All right, I'm just going to hit start and look behind me what's happening, or behind the needle, I should say. It's ruffling. You see that? I know you don't have a very up close look. There we go, but there it is. I mean, how simple is that? Okay, and then I'm going to actually, I'm not going to cut my threads because I want to leave them long just in case I want to pull more and get a little bit longer, or I mean a little bit more ruffle, I should say. Okay, there we go. So I could ruffle it more if I wanted to, but look at that. That's a pretty great ruffle, don't you think? And all I did was I hot glue gunned it. <laughs> I hot glue gunned it, baby, to the top of my pie crust. So now you could, you, you can sew through the, the, the Peltex, so that's not a problem, all right? You can certainly sew it, but I was just being lazy and I hot glue get, glued it. Um, but you would just glue it along the top or sew it, and you've got a really cute little pie pennant. Isn't that fun? 
So all we did was we just took techniques that we've been learning about and then we just put them together. So much fun. All right, so that I, I hope you um, didn't mind going through that process, but um, I just think it's so important that you realize that you have more creativity in you uh, than you think. And um, I do believe that, well, let me tell you, um, for a long time, I, and I've shared this with some before, for a long time, I didn't think I had any talents. And I'm, and I'm not just saying that. I, I honestly didn't feel like I had very, very many talents because growing up, I thought, well, only the people who you know, played the piano or was a sports star or whatever, or the ones who could sing were the ones who were talented, right? And what I realized um, much, probably too, probably much later than I would have liked to have realized and what I'm trying to teach my own children now is that sometimes we don't have those outside talents, but uh, that that people see in that way, um, being the b being the athlete, being the singer, w being the pianist, whatever it might be. But what I feel like my talent was was that I always had a curiosity for learning, and that curiosity, I believe, has led me to what I do now. Is because I if I don't know how to do something, by golly, I want to learn how to do it. I want to try it. I want to give it a. I want to give it a go. I want to be creative, and so perhaps maybe creativity is something that someone could say. Well, that that's your talent, Chris. Well, it could, and I I do agree with that. I I have a lot of creativity, but it doesn't come naturally. I think it's something that anyone any one of us can develop. And the more we use that creativity, then the more we get better and better at it, where everything around us begins to inspire us. How many of you go into a bathroom stall and you're looking at the floor and you see really great tile prints, right? And you think, hmm, that would be such a cute quilt or that would be um, a fun design you know, a fun long arm design, you know, for quilting that next quilt. Please tell me there's more of you out there who are like that than just me, right? And so when you start seeing these ideas and you see ideas in other realms, I want you to be thinking and pushing yourself, push yourself a little bit further to say, how can I take it beyond just that? What else could I do? What could I add to it? What do I need to take away? It, sometimes it's not, not all about like going over the top. Sometimes it's keeping things simple that actually can make such a, a creative, uh, beautiful impact on a project. It doesn't have to be crazy, but sometimes it's just that, that, little, um, that little spark of creativity that leads you down a road of saying, ooh, I, I wonder what it would look like if I tried this. I wonder what it would look like if I did that. And that is one of the best lessons I've ever learned is that you can be very creative, but boy, you, what you can do, you can do so much more when you start bouncing ideas off of other people too. And that's what we do here at My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. We are constantly bouncing ideas. And well, what do you think about this? And, and no one gets offended if they don't like an idea. It's like, okay, well, maybe that could work and let's try this. And what do we do there? So surround yourself with people that you can share ideas with as well. And if you don't have those ideas that, from other people, this is a, a really important lesson. I want you to trust yourself, okay? I want you to trust yourself and listen to the voice inside of you um, that what you're doing is pretty darn good, right? It's pretty darn good. So trust yourself and trust your instincts and trust your creativity and uh, you don't have to rely on other people. It's always fun to do that, but let's say you don't have someone to do that with. Trust yourself. It's okay. We've all got it in us. We were born to create, ladies. 
We were born to create. 